Very pleased now to be joined by the one and only, the legendary, the internationally famous, the supremely talented and handsome. It is Chris Hanna. I really don't have the full way to describe Chris and who he is and how he matters to Dallas Cowboys fans anywhere. But for the purposes of today, he is the director and producer of Now or Never, a Tony Romo story. Chris, thank you so much for joining us here at Blogging the Boys. Thank you for having me. It's a dream come true to be here. So thank you so much. That's the biggest lie you've ever told, but I appreciate the kind words nonetheless. <laughs> well, not really. I actually uh, have always followed you guys, um, always, you know, before games, after games, uh, all the content that you guys put out. So it's really uh, not a lie. It's really an honor to be here. So thank you for having me. Well, I appreciate that. Our content is not what we're after here today. It's your content. Um, I do want to give the listeners a little bit of a, a backstory, if, if possible, and you can certainly help fill in the gaps. Um, you really actually are the only one who can fill in the gaps. Um, so you and I first started to interact. We were talking the other day, circa 2017, 2018. That's kind of where um, my you know sort of understanding of your story um, takes place or, or has an origin story. That's actually kind of when I started with Blogging the Boys as well. Um, and you, I mean, I remember hearing you were working on a Tony Romo documentary. That was it. And I was in, I was fascinated. I wanted a piece. Um, and it's been a, a long winding road that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Uh, but you're at the point where you did it. You did the Tony Romo documentary now or never a Tony Romo story. So congratulations from all of us to you. We can't wait to learn more about it. Thank you. Um, technically it's been done since like 2020, uh, 2019. But I guess you really can't say it's done until it's out there, packaged, approved, and licensed for people to be able to watch. So you're right. Yeah, we finally did it. And so I can't wait to tell the whole story and hopefully get people inspired and motivated to also do their own stories, tell their own stories, and hopefully also uh, help us out by watching Tony Romo's inspirational story and our inspirational story um, in order for us to get back to our communities and that the impossible can become possible and so uh we thank you guys for letting us do this sure so you are a, a fan of filmmaking obviously uh director producer is not just a title we made up i mean it's the real thing uh, i saw you correct me if i'm wrong did you watch the gran turismo movie and you shared on your instagram how you were inspired by that and you, and you were like hey i th you know, this is why you know we wanted to make now or never uh you know what i mean like so it's clear that this i don't want to put it in a bottle and call it a genre but but this you know sort of uh, idea means a lot to you. So um, let's start with wherever you want. I mean, if, if you want to tell us about the movie now, you want to tell us about how everything unfolded. Um, we just want to make sure that enough people understand that this movie's coming out. Yeah. So a little background uh, behind our Never Tony Romo story. So I was actually in film school uh, when this whole thing actually started happening. And it was uh, late 2017. Um, I was a senior in film school. I was on my last year of uh, getting stuff wrapped up. And, uh, you know, Tony Romo had just retired. I think it was actually middle of 2017 or early. Um, it's a blur, you know, but uh, he had just retired in 2016, right? That came in. And so on uh, 2017, I am in Dallas and I am chatting with Danny McDonald, who would go on and become the graphic designer behind all the posters and and all the content that we have now. And so we're at actually at a Twin Peaks in Dallas and we're talking and they're replaying that one game with Tony Romo on the sidelines. And that goes on, has one of, you know, the best playoff game in my opinion that he's ever had his first season, but that's my opinion. And yes, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. I've always been, I've always will be. So the question is, um, are you even a Cowboys fan and you did this? Yes, that's, probably the reason why this even became true. And so we're at Twin Peaks and we're discussing Tony Romo's career and we're both just really sad fans and talking about like, oh, like if they would have let him in, he probably would have won the game. You know, you know us Cowboy fans, that's how sure. we are. We're always talking about the what if. And so I start getting really into the fact that, you know, whatever those, you know, those moments with Tony Romo and um, how he won those games or how he lost those games, 2014, the uh, Packers and, and Death sure. Cash. And so we're just kind of, you know, brainstorming, like, what would it be to get to actually ask these questions to Tony Romo, right? Not just the NFL, but actual fans, actual people that are not um, the NFL or ESPN, right? There, there are different ways that they do it based on their guidelines. 
So when you're more independent, you're really going based on the fan and the passion and the heart. So then I said, it'd be interesting one day, hopefully after I graduate, maybe 10 years from now, 20 years from now, I get to hopefully maybe make a movie on him. So at the time I had this one um, partner that was working with me and uh, he, you know, was already working on his business and really wouldn't have happened without him. Um, And so we, you know, started i started sharing what i was doing and he kind of told me um what i wanted to do and he told me like why not start now so there was this article by michael j mooney um from the uh texas monthly that's hanging in my room and uh he had written this article and and one of the taglines was like now or never and tony romo said the cover and he's basically depicting his whole life on this article and it kind of inspired, right? And he knows. And so I reached out to him and I said, hey, it'd be really cool to interview you maybe for the future. I don't know what's going to happen, but I would love to come to Dallas and interview you. And so he answered, he emailed back and he said, yeah, this sounds interesting. Let's do it. So I don't know how we even financed it or made it happen, but my partner at the time, um, he actually uh, was able to help out. And so here we are in Dallas. We're at this bar. Um, interviewing him i believe was in um in you know the really cool downtown area of dallas and so we're interviewing we have a great like conversation about tony's career and so after that we go to that burger place called the what is it the roots something roots. yeah 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 and uh they um they actually give you like little you know little celebrity like tags for your order so like they, you know, it can be like they're not really captured and they'll call it or whatever. Sure. And so I'm not lying. I got Tony Romo. Nice. And so I'm just like, what? So it's starting to feel more real. It's like, okay, let's see. So we're at the airport. I'm starting to look up uh, people, the coaches that actually um, coached Tony Romo back in high school. I wanted to go deep roots because at the time, the football life episode of Tony Romo was coming out. So how are we going to be different from that? Just to be clear, you mean um, NFL Films has a, a series that they call a football life, which is what it sounds like. Every episode's about, for people that don't know, different figures in NFL history, and they have done a Tony Romo episode, to your point. Exactly. And that was already in production. That was coming out before ours, and we understood that. So I was like, if this even, even happens, let's start it the right way. And so how are we going to be different from them? And a football life did go to Burlington, but they did not um, capture as much or told as much of this before, rather than focus more on the Cowboys part, which is what we knew they were going to do. Sure. So the plan was let's, you know, if all we get to make is a, a film or a short film on Tony Romo's career uh, before he even became a Dallas Cowboys, then so be it. That's what we'll do. And I mean, at this point in time, we didn't even know who we're going to get Tony Romo, right? He could have. Just been like, no, that's cool. I'm good. And then we would have done that. So I found uh, coach uh, Steve Berezowitz, who was his head basketball coach. And I emailed him. And so the next morning, when we arrived back in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I went to film school, he actually like got back to me and said that he was really interested in this. And I had told him, this is kind of going to be a thesis project um, as I'm graduating from film school. And so I want to see how far we can take this. And so he said, yeah, let me talk to the other guy. So then he was able to get Steve Tenhagen, who was Tony Romo's Jason Witten um, back in high school and who's still Tony Romo's best friend till now. Um, and he was the head coach for Burlington High School, uh, Demon Country. So he got him. And then he got Gregory Block, who was also an assistant coach when Tony played. And so it just kind of started growing. So he said, come up, come interview us. So we go, we fly into Chicago, we rent some equipment, we put stuff on our credit cards. Uh, my partner slash girlfriend, who is still Nina Hedberg to today, um, she also helped with uh, selling her guitar at the time. I sold my PlayStation. I don't know, we just sold things. We have, we made little piggy bank to make sure. this happen. And so we go out there and we interview um, all these amazing coaches, we get amazing B-roll, we, we're digging. I mean, we already had so much story content of what really is hard to grab, and we grabbed it right at first, right? So then they all liked what we were doing, and they liked how genuine we were, and they liked that we were really after the story rather than 
then you know the glory and oh we made this thing and because at the time we didn't know if we were even gonna get tony and that was okay so steve tenhagen then kind of took over and then he's the one that said hey we're having our tony romo annual football camp in about three months um summer was about to kick off and he said maybe you can come by and you can meet tony yourself and if he happens to want to keep doing this then that's on him and so I was like, wait, Tony's going to be there? And so it's <laughs> kind of all unraveling, and I'm like, what? What's going on? So we go back. We look at what we have. Um, we all, we start selling more stuff. We start uh, saving more to be back. So then I graduate. This is already kind of happening. Um, I'd like Good. to point out, you know, the fact that my thesis teacher um, was very mean in the respect where there's no way you're going to make this happen. And she knows we're cool now. Um, but I remember her telling me in front of class when I was pitching the pitch and I was, I told her, we already filmed all this and I'm going to meet Tony Romo in the summer. And so her whole reaction was, oh, like what makes you think that some kid from a small town in El Paso will even get Tony Romo's life rights and you have a 50, 50% chance to even make this happen. And so I'm kind of the, you know, positive guy. I was a little over positive back then. Um, I'm more realistic now, but still positive. And I said, well, you're telling me I have a 50% chance? <laughs> I think anybody will take that. So I'm going to take it. That's and So this said, is... Well, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. No, and so I said, we'll circle back when I make this happen because 50% chance, you're giving me a lot of odds here. I would take that on a biggest bet any day. So... so that's this is all still 2017, right? That this yeah, is all yeah. so so it's important to contextualize that because that's as far and you're saying you didn't understand that Tony was going to become a part of this project. Spoiler, he did. Uh, if that isn't obvious by, by this point, but <laughs> yeah. um, but this is his first year. Um, he never used the word retired or retirement, but his first year in sort of pseudo retirement, he's gearing up for his first season with CBS. So all of that, like again, I think that's important context. So like this whole crazy new part of his life is beginning while you're uncovering the origins of his football life. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm, you know, watching videos on NFL Network about can he possibly come back? The Denver Broncos want him. I mean, all these things are like going to affect right. if we can make this happen. And so I'm kind of hoping like, I hope he doesn't start it. And, or I don't know, man. I mean, I love him so much. It would all been whatever right i mean the fact that i was coming to meet him that was already a dream come true so anyway so then i kind of tell her we'll see what happens i appreciate the great odds you're giving me and good luck to you because the school is closing and good luck for you get a new job i will also have to figure this out so we go we're there um everybody's been amazing and i took i'm always about giving back so i took a bunch of people that were helping me with projects and they kind of also like sponsored things. And so they were just excited to come by for the ride and meet Tony Romo. Uh, everybody from El Paso, Texas, uh, like to point out that this is where it kind of originated and, and this is our headquarters now too. And so we go and, and we're um, they're at the field and I don't think I slept that night. Um, <laughs> it was just kind of like, oh my God, this is happening. And so we're walking to the field and like, there he is with his shoulder throwing beautiful balls to kids. And I like didn't even go towards them. I just went straight to like the field house and with the coach and we're filming and and we're starting to film him. And I'm just kind of waiting um, to see if we even get to talk to him. And then finally, um, coach comes and says, hey, uh, Tony spoke to everybody. He likes what you're doing and, and he would like to talk to you and maybe give you about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of interview time, which really, I uh, like to point out when you're not the NFL or not the ESPN and you didn't go through managers or agents, 15 minutes is a lot. Yes, yeah, forever. It's like forever. So I'm thinking yeah. like 15 whole minutes? Yeah. And so I have like a whole list of like 50, 100 questions. And obviously I had to um, point out the most important ones. And so I'm going and I'm really getting like which ones I have to, to ask. And so um, he, you know, then tells me he's ready. So we start what we're doing. We go set up. We have the setup ready to go. And I'm waiting there and here he comes and he sits down and he's like, so you're Chris. And I said, yes, sir. 
And uh, I just started digging in. And yes, you know, I did a fanboy at first because <laughs> I asked him a question about that Rams play where, you know. Sure, the, in 2007. Yeah, yeah the snap over his head, right. And it's an iconic play. And, you know, spoiler, that is really like how the film begins because I felt like it's, it shows Tony's career in a nutshell. The fact that he lost so many yards, but he didn't give up on the play and ran back for it and then ran to get the first down. It didn't matter what was coming up next. The fact is he was trying to make it happen right there and then. And I felt like that was the play that really shows who Tony Romo is as a person and as an athlete. And so I asked him that question, but I'm describing it like I'm describing it right now. And little did I forget that, well, that you know exactly what happened because you're Tony Romo. And so he smirked and looked at his friends and laughed. And I feel like that's kind of why he liked me because um, I was I was a fan, but not in that weird, fanatic way, but more like I really saw myself in him because I actually um, grew up here in the border and came from an uh, immigrant family, and so did him. And what this film shows is that that he came from a Mexican-American background. His grandfather actually traveled from Mosquis, Coahuila, um, and immigrated to the United States to, to San Antonio before ending up in Wisconsin. So anyways, we can talk about that later. But uh, long story short, at that moment, uh, we interviewed him 50 minutes, went to like 40 minutes, and we had so much content already. And so he said, hey, there's these two guys here um, Scott Schwell and RJ, uh, RJ, uh, JR Taylor. And they're actually my running back and my center from Eastern Illinois. And they're really good friends. And they're here right now. Would you like to interview them? And I was like, yeah, so <laughs> they come and we interviewed them too. And I'm like, I guess this is a good sign. And so being him, he asked if we had stuff that we wanted to get signed and we're like, yeah, it was so bad. And so he signs everything. And I, you know, he actually signed, well, he, number one, he then said, um, you know, circle back with me. And if you need more content, we can figure it out. So then I said, okay, I guess that's a yes. <laughs> so then we go back, uh, we go through the footage. And at that moment you start not getting greedy, but you start feeling like, what if we got more? Why yeah. have we really grown this? Well, you're into it. I mean, you're, you're, you know what I mean? Like it's evolving. Like it's, that's, that's a completely fair thing. Yeah. And, and you're just kind of like, well, this is cool. It's cute right now, but it can be more powerful. Mm -hmm. And so I start sending emails again. <laughs> and so I asked them, Hey, we have all this stuff. Like, um, I would love to interview his dad or his mom, maybe his grandparents other people and so tony being so uh meticulous on the way that he does things he says i'm interested but i would like to see how this is coming out show me a teaser and so we're used to it at film school it's like everybody always tells you like you gotta do a, a highlight reel or you gotta do a, a teaser um so that you can get investors and so we knew what we had to do so we go in and we do put together like a 10 minute uh, thing with sound and, and the camp and what this is going to look like and let it looks into what we had. Uh, he probably wanted to see the quality. So it didn't just look like a really like weird. an iPhone or something. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. So we put that together, we send it over and within two days, the coach gives me a call and says, uh, Hey, Chris, congrats. Tony wants to keep doing this. And so I was like, okay, awesome. So <laughs> here we go again. And then we start selling more things and, and also to point out is we, the only time we could film was during summer camps. So we actually had to wait almost like more than half a year to be able to shoot again. Yeah. We had to wait for, cause he, like we said, he'd started at CBS and he had a whole new yeah. career and everything. And then he took off and be, like that first year at CBS and everything became so massive and gigantic. So yeah. So you had to kind of sit on everything and plan and, and, you know, get all your ducks in a row. Exactly. So then we waited and then here we go back. And then this time around, um, you know, we take a few more things. We show him a poster um, and we interview him again. And this time he gave us even more, uh, more time than last time. Um, we ended up interviewing his father. 
uh, who really made this film what it is too, because he would end up helping me even more also. And uh, as tough of a man that he is, he's really all, all about faith and God and, and give back, but also protect Tony. So it was always a whole thing where like, um, all right, Chris, let's slow down or this and that, or this is what we can do now. And so at the time you're just thinking like, he did this because he wanted to do this. He didn't have to do any of this. And like, you take that to heart and you feel bad all the time when you keep asking for stuff because you want to get this done. Right. And so he never paid for the film. We made the film happen. And so we had to figure it out. Right. And so we go, we interview more, we get Ken Kramer as well, who was his, uh, his um, agent at IMG International from Florida. So we get stuff with him and then Tony's so excited. Uh, we're at this get, we got invited to this get together with them and we're like, okay, I guess we're in. And then he's like, hey, if you like to go to Dallas, I would love for you to interview my grandparents. And so that was exciting. So we finished everything and he signed, you know, I would like to say he signed this poster and I didn't even ask him, like, he put to CGM Productions, thanks for taking a chance on me, smiley face. Can't wait to see the finished product. And I'm like, that's the kind of guy he is. You mm -hmm. know, that's what I want people to understand. What you see on CBS, what you saw years and years as the Dallas Cowboys. He gives back. Nobody knows he gave back. Nobody has to even see this. And that's what he does. That's who he is. And so as a director, as a producer, you meet your hero. They always say, don't meet, don't ever meet your heroes. Sure. Um, I took a chance on that and I did, and he took a chance on me. And so that shows that there are great people out there. There are people that, that made it, that are good people that are keep giving back, that are giving other people opportunities. And when you get that now, it's your time to do the same thing. And so we go to Dallas, we meet the grandparents. Um, that made it even more emotional because I saw myself more as him. And they're here, they're playing the guitar, they're talking in Spanish. I felt like I was with my own grandparents growing sure. up in Oaxaca and Juarez. And so it makes it even more special. And so we get everything and we feel like we're, I think we're wrapped. I think we have the whole film. And this is still 2017? Like just to it's kind of- about 2018. So okay. This is our, like fall 2018 when we kind of wrapped it all okay that's filming that's film right and so i can stop there but as far as film production that's where it kind of that's where it ended right and then post and and the toughest part of the journey will come some people would say well isn't the toughest part getting tony romo not really in <laughs> terms of how good of a person he is but that's where the luck part came in right when people still tell me good luck with it i'm like thank you but i think the luck part was when tony romo said yes it's like that's when you need luck because you don't know that's like winning the lottery right like, sure him, him giving you a chance after that and he told me it's about all right i gave you something what are you going to do with it you know i gave you lemons what kind of lemonade are you going to make and so that's when the real journey in my opinion would begin is making this thing possible for people to watch so let's take a break here and, and understand. So you've, you know, all on, on chance emails you've sent, you've acquired someone, talked to someone, you know, you've gone here, you've traveled here, you sold your PlayStation, the guitar is sold. You guys have nothing to entertain yourselves anymore, except for obviously editing this movie over and over again. And I mean, I, I, I certainly empathize with the Mexican American, you know, part of the story. Not everybody will in the same way, obviously. Uh, but that's something, you know, I think you and I are around the same age. I'm 33 years old. Um, if you were, you know, if, if you were at an impressionable age when Tony Romo took over as a, and if you were, you know, in, in our case, a Mexican American person, it was a really powerful thing um, to see him as, as the, fo as the center of the universe. I mean, that's really what yeah. it was. And, and not just to be the quarterback of the Cowboys, but the way it happened. And obviously you've documented all this as this undrafted player um, and, and this, you know, unbelievable rise to stardom. And um, that was kind of when, you know, the internet really took off. Um, and so that really kind of exacerbated the issue and then made him more polarizing, made the team more polarizing the way they lost, made them more polarizing. Um, so it was just this, it was this incredible phenomenon of time that I don't know that we'll ever see again. Obviously, Dak Prescott comes close to that in a lot of ways uh, with the level of polarization that surrounds him. But um, it was a unique time, which is why I'm, I'm very happy and thrilled that you did this. 
Um, but so you mentioned that that's sort of, and again, as, as I understand it, the easy part, relatively speaking, of your journey. So you make this movie and you're like, all right, let's let's do it. And, and not and like you're not even talking about the production or the editing or anything like that. The, the difficulty, you said you got Tony Romo, but like getting Tony Romo in a public sense is the, the journey, as I understand it, the difficult journey. Getting the rights to Tony Romo, literally speaking, is what has been the biggest part of, of what you all have experienced. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, I mean, not even getting the rights to Romo's story because he had I had already passed all the right. tests with him in terms of quality, story. Hopefully this kid knows how to tell my story accurately. He gambled on me, right? And so I uh, took a release form and I never thought he would sign it. And that was so that we could take it to the NFL and say, look, we got Tony Ramos approval because nowadays people don't understand like, like you need that mm -hmm. you know, to tell people this is legit, especially with uh, a corporation like the NFL. And so wish, you know, I remember my lawyer, uh, my attorney, uh, Brian Kennedy, who's my entertainment lawyer, because I didn't even have a lawyer at the time. When I started going with the NFL, people started telling me, you should have a lawyer. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how I can afford one, but I guess I'll, yeah, I, I, I'll get an Xbox and sell that too. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. For sure. <laughs> I'll sell my Game Boy Color. Right. I think it's worth a lot of money right now. And so, yeah. So it was like, I called him and, and, and you know, he, he, he uh, was a mutual friend, uh, Steve Kaplowitz. Uh, I mean, yeah, Steve Kaplowitz, there's a bunch of Steve's that helped this thing make out possible, but. Steve Kaplowitz at ESPN 600, who's covered this for a long time. And I took him and Jessica Nevarez, who, you right. know, uh, from KTSM. Uh, that's a great story, too. But uh, they're the ones that kind of cover the story, this and that. And so then they connected me with Brian. And Brian told me, like, look, um, we're going to battle. Because he told me, he's like, it's not going to be easy with the NFL. And I was kind of in this cloud nine at the time. You look back and the world was my oyster. I had done this. It's going to be awesome. Um, obviously, you think that in 2019 or 2020, the film is going to come out and then life sure. happens, right? And so he told me, you need to make sure Tony signs this agreement. And so backing up, when I went there, I showed that and took a glance at it and signed it. But at the time, I thought, we're good. That's it, awesome. yeah. Right? <laughs> right. But so I have his beautiful signature on this release that lets me take this thing forward if I want it to be bigger, right? Because even today, when I tell people I made this Tony Romo film, the question is, is he in it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I still get asked that. It's it's nuts <laughs> because it's not available yet, right? Till soon. And, and so it's it's been a lot, man. And I mean, so many roadblocks, but again, once that happened, um, going to post-production, we edit the film, we get it done. At the time, it was an hour and 36 minutes, which was a lot. Not only did I have so much NFL footage in there because I was unrealistic and didn't realize that that was going to be the biggest hurdle, um, Tony Romo's dad actually provided me with some emails to reach out to them, which is also how much they wanted this film to come out, was that they helped me by connecting me with people in the NFL. And so um, we had like 70 minutes of footage. We had a lot of other content. Um, people would tell me it's a little repetitive. I was still very like tunnel vision at the time. And so there were still moments that Tony's great. Tony's great. Tony's great. And like, you know, we get it. And so condensed, right? And uh, we go with the NFL films and Linda Andrus, uh, who's still my contact till today, um, years after, she's the one that's been tackling this project since day one. And so she told me, oh, this is awesome. Let me see Tony's release. I show it to her. They take a while. They then talk to Tony and ask if this was real, if this was, you know, if he really endorsed this. And so they want to see the movie. And so here I am sending it to NFL films and they said, this is really good. We approve this, which I was like, wow. But it will cost for you to distribute this. And so I'm like, okay, what are we talking about here? 20 bucks. Yeah, I, I got the Game Boy Color ready. Let's go. Uh, and so, I mean, 
I mean, the hell with it, you know, like I can just say like they wanted to do like 10,000 to $15,000 per minute. Do the math. <laughs> 17 minutes. That's basically bravo. This is awesome. Good job at doing this thing with him. Great. He likes it. But here you go. It's, I mean, they're they're a multi 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 billion dollar corporation for a reason, um, and so that's that's the that's part of the I, look. The story is Tony Romo's, and I obviously am very impressed with what you've done. But this is the story. I mean, like for anyone, because like it's not, uh, and I don't at all mean to minimize the work that you and your team have done. But it's not just like, hey, let's grab some cameras and drive or, or sell our guitar and get to Burlington, like cool you filmed everything and you edited everything but like you have to go through all these legal and financial hurdles just to get it in front of people like on their screens like that's i mean that's really um i mean to the point that we're having this conversation in 2023 beyond the fact of of how the world changed three years ago um that has been what you've been dealing with for some time now that you're you know closer uh to finally being in the breakthrough of yeah yeah and and so it's um it's crazy to talk about it because you know we at that point we're like okay and so they're like what you can do is distribute it get a distributor and then when they sell to hbo or netflix or whatever um which didn't happen not yet right but they're like when you do that they'll pay for that that was the whole ideology octagon entertainment came in and they liked this a lot, Gravitas Ventures. And before this, we had already paid the NFL a lot of money to go through, um, which I had some investors that helped to go, to even go to festivals. They wanted to charge for festival licensing too. So to even get to festivals, we had to do that. And we thought, we'll find distributors when we go to festivals, which we did, so it was worth it. So we played in like, I don't know, 50 plus film festivals across the country. We played in Rhode Island, Flickers, which is an academy qualifier, Patriots country, and the film played there. So we knew it was great. Cowboys fans came there everywhere. We're everywhere. And so um, we're excited, this and that. Octagon Entertainment, who represents, uh, at, you know, they've represented uh, talent. I don't know if they still do, but they were the representation for, uh, for Emmett Smith. And so they do a lot of, they have like a subdivision for athlete film that, you know, film, film, films made about athletes. And so they love this. And so they're like, we'll take it. So in February 2020, what happened that month? Yeah. We entered the market the weekend that toilet paper was gone. Right. Blood wipes were gone. And this crazy thing's happening. And so... Months keep going, we're quarantined, we're going through stuff, and we're still thinking like, oh, this is, we're going to get this. Yeah, like every, we're two weeks and we'll be back now. in the office. Right, yeah, yeah totally. We're doing content now, blah, 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 it's going to be great. And so good things was, which will reflect now, um, whether it gets to a streamer after digital, is that HBO loved this and kept us on the edge of our seats for months on a decision. Amazon Studios did the same thing because they've done stuff with the Cowboys, right? Right. Following their season and stuff like that. Um, so did uh, Showtime. So Showtime, HBO, and Amazon. Question is always, did Netflix want it? No. Their thing was, this is not broad enough. That's what they told us. This is not broad enough. Then, now they have quarterbacks. Yeah, now they have their, they have a whole sports like, like category. Cool, right? I think Tony Romo's still a bigger, bigger quarterback than those two. Only difference is Tony's not playing anymore. Right. But again, every year it changes. The market changes. The content changes. So now it's different. But back then, it was not broad enough for them. Sure. Cool. But HBO, Showtime, and and Amazon wanted it. So we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Uh, then they start saying, you know, it's just really hard for us to pay crazy amounts of money to the NFL plus pay you guys. It's just not going to happen right now. So then our distributor wants a broadcast cut. So we had to cut it from an hour 36 to like an hour, eight minutes for this is for like for a television for stream, television. like right yes. to but allow for commercials and stuff like, right. Okay. And they even went and said, well, 
They didn't ask the NFL, like, we'll sell it to you. The NFL's like, this is great, and we love it, but we did our own thing. We're not going to buy some kid's film. That's just reality. And then CBS, oh, and then at the time, Tony Romo was picking who he was going to go with. And ESPN wanted him so much, remember? Mm -hmm. They made him a great deal. And so ESPN... You're talking the, the second time when he renegotiated his deal with CBS, right? And ESPN said, we're going to wait to see what Romo does. Mm. And maybe we'll take this. Yeah, and you had well, you had ESPN Plus, you had, and all these things were popping up at the same time, ESPN Plus, Paramount Plus. So like all these new potential homes and all these things that are exciting for you and I, I think a lot of people have been there in their own journeys in life. Like you're almost afraid to dream. You're afraid to like imagine if if this happens, then maybe you know all these other dominoes can fall. But if that happens, these dominoes can fall. So it's it's difficult and scary to have your dream played with like that. Yeah, and so you're sitting there thinking, if he picks ESPN, they'll take this thing. But it's his life. It's his decision. So people always ask me, did you tell him? No. <laughs> why right it's his life if it just happens to align with me cool but at the end of the day i already had this thing and so because he gave me this opportunity so i remember i was on vacation and um somewhere quarantined and i shouldn't have done that but you know everybody got really crazy during that year and so uh i get the notification that he decided to stay with cbs because he was gonna broadcast the super bowl that year and I knew this and I was not surprised. People asked me, like, he was going to get more money with ESPN. It's never been about the money for Tony. And that's in the film. And so all these things are aligning with his decisions because I know who he is as a person. And so for him was the fact that he got to do this thing broadcasting the Super Bowl, which is mm -hmm. only a dream come true for him too, right? He just wants to do the next big thing and be great at the next thing he decides he wants to be good at it, and he does that. And so I was very happy for him. I was extremely proud that he was going to this other level with his career because as a Roma fan, as a Cowboys fan, I wanted to see him win a Super Bowl. And not saying one day he couldn't win a Super Bowl as a coach or as a coordinator. I think he's still – he's even now – People will be like, yeah, I mean, look at his football IQ as a as a broadcaster. And so I was extremely happy for him. Unfortunately, um, ESPN didn't take the film because then this new thing that we learned was we're not going to take content from somebody that's with the competition network. And so CBS was like, no, we can do our own content too. So then nobody, no network wanted to take it because then they'd be promoting this amazing broadcaster that works mm. for CBS. So here we are, 2020 goes, um, but, you know, it goes by, we leak into 2021, Octagon Entertainment is disappointed, and so they give up on the project, and so we're sitting with a film that's there, we have no distributor now, um, it's painful, Tony's kind of moving on, um, but later on he kept you know, he called the NFL and said, what can be done, work with them. And that's all he could really do. And people always ask, why didn't he pay for it? No, man, it's not about that. You know, I'm not going to pay for my own film. This guy did it. And so I'm going to give this guy a chance. And I feel like at some point in time, that's when you go from good to close to what you can do. You're unlocking your true self of what you can achieve when you're on a wall and you have nothing else, you can't see anything, all there is darkness and you have to find the light yourself because that's what someone like Tony did when he didn't get drafted and he figured it out and then went on to have the career he's had. And so we were patient, we waited. Um, we kept waiting, we started doing other projects, we left the film there. Um, I'm not going to sit here and lie that some nights were rough. Yeah. There were nights I'm sitting there crying because, you know, I, we did this thing and nobody can see it. We made the possible, we made the impossible possible, but nobody can see it. And that's when it sinks in. So we find this other distributor, but it's the same situation. If it's not licensed, if it's not cleared, we can't really do anything at the time. Um, 
Jessica Navarez was working with Players TV Network. Um, we, you know, just a little background on her. She was a reporter for KTSM here in El Paso. Right. And took her with us with Steve Cabalos from ESPN 600. And she got to meet her hero, Tony Romo, and interview him. And she met the Cowboys and Nick Eatman and everybody because they were there covering that too. And so uh, Jessica got inspired by this. And so she moves to Dallas and now works for the Dallas Stars, now works for the Dallas Cowboys for their podcast. Um, and so before that, she was working with Players TV Network, who's kind of a small up and coming network on Samsung Plus um, that's athlete funded specifically by, you know, Chris Paul and NBA players and other players. Um, I believe uh, Kelsey was also there. Um, so she introduces us to them and they're really excited. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, even if it's an up and coming network, still an opportunity to show right. us. And so they're like, oh yeah, no, totally. We'll, we'll pay for it. We'll talk to the NFL, blah, blah, blah. Um, unfortunately, months go, months go again, and we lose even more time because, you know, Jessica knows this. Um, they were just not ready for something like this. I think they were still financially not there. And so I've been there, right? We got to try to be who we are, even if we're not. And so they were also not able to, to take this. And I remember one text was, do what you need to do. Don't wait for us. And to me, it was okay. Obviously, this is not real. It's not going to happen. So NFL has sent their lower rates. They were working with them on it. Um, so then that was more time that just didn't happen. So then that was 2022. So then um, here we are, early 2023. And so I'm sitting there thinking, what am I going to do? If I wait any more longer, more years, nobody's going to care anymore, especially if he's not broadcasting or, you know, he's not doing commercials or who knows. I mean, I think maybe it's a timeless story, but you don't want to wait that long anymore either. This is already long enough. The reality of life and things like this is you, you need a bit of a tidal wave. Sometimes you need, you have to ride things. And so you're right. Like life happens, but, um, but circumstances can change. And, you know, if, if one movie, whatever movie had come out at a different time, it may have been more popular or less popular. There's just, there's circumstances that are involved in everything. So almost done, I swear. And so we're here in January and go back to Nina, my partner. And I tell her, look, we got to really cut down the footage. We got to recut the movie. I'm sorry. I know we thought this was done, but let's present something to the NFL. Here we go back, four years in, have to re-edit this film. We added parts we had cut for that broadcast cut that I did not really like. And we added all the, because they were like, oh, we don't want that much grandparents. And I was like, I want grandparents. <laughs> so we added that in. We added the basketball coach stuff. We added more things that we we now could if we were to get them. Because my, my idea was, I'm going to try to get the best deal possible to go to digital and then I'll fundraise the money. And the NFL was like, we're going to charge you per platform. And I said, that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to figure out, but if not, I'll take prime video. If prime video is all I can get, cool. And I also need a new distributor, which I didn't have in January. Yet. So I thank God I had made these other two films, one through PBS called Art of a Cowboy, it's the Bolden story and beyond the dream, an El Paso little documentary that these two films happened because they wanted to pay for them. They liked what I was doing with the Romo. They had seen it at festivals. So that's how I survived the pandemic, making other films while I'm getting this one out there. So I distributed these two because I owned the music. I owned everything. I learned my lesson. I'm going to own everything. So I had met Exploration Films, who is now my distributor for a lot of stuff. And they're out of Monument, Colorado, and they're a faith-based company. So they took Art of a Cowboy. I told them about this Romo thing. And I was just thinking, like, maybe this can also be like a faith film because the film is very faith driven. It's not like in your throat faith, but you can see it from the grandparents to the dad, faith first, God first, uh, family. It was clean. I felt like this was for them. I tell them the whole story. They said, look, we like it. 
We don't love the limited rights. We don't love the fact that you might just have it for five years or three years, but try to make something happen and we'll figure it out. So I had a soft maybe, not even a yes. <laughs> so then I'm like, okay, cool. So we cut the film. We had Chris Aguirre, who was from El Paso, in, and he did some illustration for the movie. It's also featured on this new trailer now. And he drew Tony Romo, and we added some stuff. He's actually uh, worked with uh, DreamWorks and, and, and Warner Brothers, and he was part of the initial team for Space Jam and all those OG cartoons, and he's an El Paso. In, and so he, he understood you know, what I've been going through. And so he helped make some illustration on his own time and did that limited stuff so that we could do it. So then we have now finally an hour, 12 minute film that tells the whole story that's concise, it's slimmer, it goes to the point. And we were able to cut about 15, 17 minutes of footage to like barely like four, five. But we did it in a creative way where it doesn't feel like we don't have that much. You watch it and you feel like there's enough here. And so that was a whole idea. But the point is, it's a grassroots film with a little bit of the Cowboys element, and but it felt really well proportioned. And so I was really happy with it. This was already our third cut. And to be honest, I look back to the first cut and I'm actually really happy. And I would say this was my favorite. I just watched it at a special screening and people love it. And it's still the film that we intended to make. And if anything, I feel like it's the proper distribution length for it too. So we then go to the NFL and we say, this is the film, this is the footage we're using. What can we do to get a three, five year deal that allows us to not only be on one platform, but be in multiple digital platforms for buyer rent? What can we do? So you, you annoy the NFL for three, four years and you keep annoying them, then they'll get tired of it and they're like, all right, you still got to pay. We'll give you a you know, one year, three year, five year deal. This is the amount. Now it wasn't just like, oh, I can just swipe my credit card and do this. No, <laughs> I still had to find people. I go to the distributor and, and I say, they're giving me a three and a five year. I said the five years a little too much. I can do a three year deal and I can try to find the money if you guys take on this. They're like, let's do it Chris. And so that meant a lot for me emotionally because all these other distributors didn't want it anymore because they didn't want to take unlimited rights yet this small distribution company that has you know licensed stuff like the shows and worked with pure flex and done stuff but they're still rather small they took a chance on this film on me understanding the sacrifices and understanding the fact that that we worked so hard with god's grace to be able to get to where we're at and so they they took a chance on us so then I went back to my distributors and I remember one David Garman who does 915 tours here in El Paso and he takes, he has a company, now it's a bigger bus company of El Paso, the biggest, but he started doing tours, um, taking uh, cowboy fans to watch the cowboy games from El Paso and I would do that with them and help them host and stuff. So he understands what it takes to grow a business or to grow something. And so he's been with me since day one and so he looked at the amount and he told me, because I had already gotten two other investors to cover like a little portion of it. And he looks at it, he's like, this is it? That's all you need to get this going for three years? And I was like, yeah. And so he was like, let's do it. I didn't have to sell it, no nothing. He's like, I understand. And so he signs a check, he gives it to me. We give everything to the NFL. We had a payment plan because there was no way that I was going to be able to pay all at once. So we had like a three month payment plan and thanks to David, we were able to actually pay three months, two months before it was all due. So we get it, we finally get the receipt that says paid three years, um, BLD, so Apple TV, um, you know, uh, Amazon Prime, YouTube, Vimeo, anywhere where you can rent or buy a movie, Google Play, iTunes, um, Tony Romo's uh, story is going to be there. And so the receptions that we've had now, we just had a special distribution party screening and our tickets were pretty hefty. And we sold about 90 out of like 110 on a Wednesday night, which is hard. 
and we did raffles and Tony Romo signed stuff and people love the film and they stay throughout the hour of the Q and A. And so we know if there's, there's a demand for this film, people love it. People love Romo. People love the story and people are inspired by our story in making this. And so I just want to tell people, like, even in those moments where it's hard to see, everybody's been there one way or another in different professional lives, in our family lives, everything. And, you know, we're only here once. And so if that's our path. We have to get to the finish line. It doesn't matter how long it takes. And so I ask people to hopefully watch this film, wait for this film, it will come out. I know people are like, well, when is it coming out? And so... Fall 2023 is what we're doing right now. We're looking tentatively around September 28th, which is my very first birthday. I hope that's a day. That's what I pitched the distributor. But right now we just turned in uh, hopefully our last uh, quality control version of the film because Apple is really picky about quality control. So we're waiting for them to approve it, but we're on the final phases now. And my distributor told me we're almost there this way. And uh, it's not end of September, it'll be October, but for sure it's going to be this fall. And so you can, you know, um, stay tuned soon in a couple of weeks and hopefully you can watch it. So, yeah. That's really awesome, man. I mean, uh, congratulations to you and your team. It's, it's an incredible story, uh, about an incredible story. I think that's what uh, will hit hard with people. And one of the reasons, you know, I wanted to have you on and we wanted to talk to you here was to hear this. I mean, because I think, you know, um, like my wife and I, we have access to, I don't know how many streaming platforms, but like every Friday night, it's like, there's nothing to watch. It's amazing. Like, you know what I mean? Like we can have all these options and like, so we very often will rent movies, you know what I mean? Like that are, you know, whatever, five bucks, six bucks that have been out for a little while. Um, Cause now we have a kid and two dogs. We don't ever get out of the house. That's just the way it goes. Um, and so like, Without a conversation like this, I think people would have seen it and been like, oh, what is this? Like, oh, I love Tony Romo. Cool. Like, let's check it out. But this story matters, you know, a great deal. It, it matters the entire deal to understand how this happened, to understand how it got here, to understand all the legal loopholes and logistical loopholes and, you know, things you had to, I say loopholes, loops or hoops or whatever you had to jump through uh, just to be able to get here to a chance to have people to watch it, uh, which is really incredible. Um, so, you know, like you said, hopefully end of September, if not kind of right around there for everyone to look, like you said, all, you named all the platforms. Um, it's just, it's, it's really cool. And I think people are really, really, really going to like it. You deserve a lot of props. You deserve all the props. I mean, you've, you've made it here. You're not, you know, you're on the final mile of a marathon. Um, but at this point it's like, I already did all of them. Like what's one more mile at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, you know, I just want to say this too. I, I wouldn't be where I'm at without, like Tony Romo's foundation in Burlington, he wouldn't be where he's at without his foundation in Burlington. And it's the same here. I wouldn't be where I'm at without Nina Hedberg, my partner, and my whole entire ZGM production team that was behind me, and the community of El Paso. Um, not everybody, right? In the community, there's always people that are like, man, I'm not really going to support you. But there was a strong foundation of people that did believe in this because they've been through the same with their own businesses and they understood how long it takes to make something. Um, I don't even like to say great. I'm not, you know, I like to stay humble, right? And I feel like it is great uh, that we did something um, that a lot of people just would have quit, that a lot of people would have just been like, this is too tough now. And honestly, I'd like to point out that uh, really what people ask me at the special screening, what kept you going? And it really was the film itself. You know, when you watch the film, I think you watch the trailer, you already see a little, little totally. take on, on what Tony Romo says. And there is a specific moment where, you know, he says, you're, you're going to, you're going to fail. You're going to mess up. But as long as you keep going and you believe in it, you believe in God, anything is possible. And so that word, those, those words that he said in the film inspired me, um, inspired the team, inspired Nina to keep going because here you have the man himself, the, you know, the hero, the legend, um, Tony Romo, telling you that you can do this. If I did it, so can you. And that kept us going. And now that, that we, we have done this and gotten into the finish line, I mean, it was even hard to even ask for more because they've done so much. And, and so here I am asking them if, if he can sign a couple of Blu-rays and 
and a couple of football cards and uh, posters and more, you know, things to promote the film with. And of course he did, because that's how he is. He just, if he believes in something, he's going to get back and give it to you, but he's not just going to do all the work for you. Here's the opportunity. What are you going to do with it? And so we're excited to finally give him the date. Um, we were told he will post about it. So we're very excited for that. But it, he will do it once we exactly know um, the official date. So I hope this inspires people to also pick up their cameras, dig into their piggy bank, and make it happen. But be smarter than me. Like, don't just use unlicensed footage <laughs> and hope for the best because that's what I did. But I, you know, people ask me, would you change anything back? No, it's it's made us who we are. It's made me who I am. And I'm smarter and stronger because of it. And that's the journey God wanted me to take to get this film out there. And so I can't wait to enjoy it. No, that's um, a really incredible story. Um, certainly the um, the unlicensed footage, maybe not the best step forward for anyone, but you're right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you, you mentioned, I mean, this idea was birthed while you were, you know, finishing film school. I mean, you know, so like it's, it's a, it's a different thing, different set of circumstances, I'm sure. I mean, over the, all this time, you've grown enormously as a person and everyone around you in your circle and your um, your team and your staff and everything. And so um, and that's that's kind of, you know, when because I, I remember hearing about it. And I actually uh, when I first met Jess, she and I talked about how she, you know, got involved. And I you know, obviously hearkened back to when you and I first spoke. Um, and I, I mean, I remember at the time kind of getting started in my own career and you know you guys were going out to burlington and we had talked about it and i i couldn't get there at the time and that was just a difficult thing um that again i i would never advise anyone to do anything the way i've done it either uh but sometimes you have to take risks sometimes you you yeah. have to take gambles sometimes you know things are presented sometimes you have to say no so i mean it's it life is like that and so you have to kind of measure what's you know what how your your situation is unfolding in front of you and you've obviously done that and, and that's a really exciting thing um, I know Jess is excited for you as well. Uh, we're all excited. Um, it's just so cool that this is finally, um, you know, going to happen uh, and that we're in the 11th hour of it all. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's time to breathe, I think, for you, Chris. Yeah, it is. Uh, I am breathing the best way possible. I mean, I am uh, in post-production for like three more films and and uh, shooting a docu-series on a high school here for football. So. I've seen you posting about that, yeah. Yeah, so again, I am insane, and uh, you know, I just wanna keep working, and I live, I like to say I live my life saying that if tomorrow's my last day, um, I'm happy with what I've done today, and, and that's how I wanna keep living my life, so. You know, I can rest when I'm not here anymore. Um, I do have, I do rest though, a little bit. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask, um, did you guys ever get the guitar or PlayStation back or any sort of substitute in the future? We did get a PlayStation 4 back, yes. Okay. Uh, we, we did, the Switch. So, it, it, so but it, you it's know, there in case we need it, right? In case we need to, to sell it, it's there. So. It doubles as a Blu-ray player, though. So you, it's a great way to screen the movie, is, is what you can tell yeah. yourself. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay, so give us your social handle so everyone can know, so everyone can follow, so everyone can be aware of all the updates for the film, please. Yes, yeah, so my personal is at Chris Hanna seventy four, and uh, at Now or Never Doc, and at CGN Productions. So you can follow all three of those. Um, specifically, go to at Now or Never Doc, and we're for sure gonna be um, posting when this film is gonna be out. Uh, the same as my personal, but yeah, that's uh, that's what we're looking at right now. So as soon as we know the official date, the graphics gonna be ready to put up, sent to Tony, and. Uh, we're going to begin promoting it. And I'll also be at a couple of Dallas Cowboys games this year. I know for sure I'll be there at the Jets and at the Patriots game. And I'll be uh, visiting people. Hopefully they don't kick me out of the tailgates, but I'll be visiting people at tailgates, telling them all about the movie, hanging out with Cowboy fans and promote the film and hopefully enjoy a good season with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that you've picked those games, obviously. Uh, the Jets game is the home opener for Dallas and a CBS top broadcast uh, broadcast. Obviously, Jim Nance, Tony Romo, Tracy Wolfson will be in the building for that. Um, obviously, I'm sure you're well aware that Aaron Rodgers has never lost at AT&T Stadium and in the building. So uh, it should be a lot of fun. You know, 
again, I'm I'm not going to say that I'm I'm happy it didn't come out sooner for you, but it, you know this is a you talked about it. It is a Super Bowl year for CBS this year, so um, you do have that. Like we talked about, you you need the the waves. You know what I mean? That that there are things, so many things in life outside of our control. Um, sometimes you need one of those or ten of those to go your way, and at least some of them are breaking in your direction here in 2023. I agree with you. I I think uh, I think the fact that it's it's worked, you know, Nina and I talk about this all the time and she made a good point. She said, I don't think we were ready back then for this. Oh, we were ready the way we're ready now. And she's right. As much as you feel like you're ready, I don't feel we were. I feel like we're we're better because of it and we're ready now to tackle this. And and because we've done so many more films just with being able to say we did this thing. And I mean, I always say people always say, oh, it's finally going to give you back. No, it's it's giving me so much already, so mm-hmm. many opportunities and networks and more films. And so Tony already changed our lives. It's already happening. And so what's going to happen now is just a plus. For me, it's the fact that people can see this. It's not sure. even about the money. It's the fact that it's now real. The fact that I can sit on my couch and click buy because I will. I mean, I was next following me for that, but I'm like, no, I'm going to do that <laughs> because it's not real. So I can click buy on Prime Video or Apple or wherever. Then it's real. Then it happened. And um, that's like we've been waiting on for years. And it's exciting. I think you're right. I think, you know, again, I'm sure a lot of people have thought about this as you and I have been talking about, like, there are things in my own life that are opportunities um, that if they had happened a year ago, five years ago, I, I, I would have failed. You know what I mean? Like I've, I've learned a lot, you know, about this or that or whatever in the time that I'm more ready for those challenges. And there's challenges that I'm not ready for now, you know, that I hopefully God willing will be someday in the future. Um, but I, I will buy the movie too. I get that. Um, and finally, you know, you can answer all those people, you know, that are like, is Romo in it? You could be like, well, go buy it. And you, you can see for sure. Uh, you can see like the caption, like starring Tony Romo. Um, <laughs> It's really exciting. And again, I think if you, um, you mentioned being from El Paso and, and all of our audience or a lot of our audience knows this, um, anyone who's followed me, I'm from the Rio Grande Valley. And, and so, you know, obviously I mentioned my age, but when Tony Romo burst onto the scene, it was just this like rabid excitement in South Texas. Um, yeah. and I, and I think people have a misconception of what South Texas is, but these border towns, um, I don't know how much time you've spent, um, kind of in the Corpus Christi Kingsville area, but I remember very vividly, uh, there was this this great uh, barbecue spot that burned down. And they've since reopened it in Robstown called Joe Cotton's. And um, and I remember there was this at the time when when Tony was dating Jessica Simpson. It was my my I had a whole my family's all from that area. And everybody was like calling like Romo and Witten and Jessica Simpson or at Joe Cotton's. And every, every, it was just the most like exciting thing in the world that he would be at this like this hole in the wall barbecue joint that only we knew about. Uh, which was, you know, again, just kind of emblematic of of who he was and what the phenomenon was at the time for for this part of the world. Yeah, and they're they're all they're all about Texas too. Like you just mentioned, Robstown, Texas. That's where Tony's grandmother Felicitas from. She was mm-hmm. born in Robstown. Like, and you know, her grand his grandfather, um, who I like to point out, uh, actually passed away in 2020, a couple of months after we wrapped the film. Um, so we honor him in the movie as well. And so, I, uh, you know, they're from Texas. And you're right. It's like uh, being, you know, Paso and understanding that Tony's family went through something similar of having to come here for better, better life. So that most of my family and most of a lot of uh, U.S. citizens now that were born here had to go back to Mexico and then come back. I mean, it's a different life out here, right, in this area. And so people look at this film now and they look at Tony Romo and they're like, I'm just like him. Mm-hmm. He might not, that's, you know, he's way more handsome than me. <laughs> and most people combined, I would say, but he's just like us. He's, he came from that family. And, and I tell you uh, this much, um, he doesn't, you know, he always tells his grandfather, like in the trailers, like I wouldn't be me if it wasn't for you, grandpa. And so I feel the same way with my grandparents with, Looking down, you know, at me now, it's the fact that we wouldn't be who we are with other people that sacrifice so much for us to be able to do what we do today. And so that film shows it. And I think it's going to inspire a lot of people um, that it came from 
from real fans, real people that that that, that understand it and and that want to show it uh, the best, most humane, uh, beautiful, spirited way possible. That's really well said. I have one final thing, and then we can get your closing remarks. I waited to tell you this um, for the audience. Chris and I chatted over the phone last week for a great length of time. We were actually supposed to record this last week. We ran into some scheduling snafus, uh, but I think it worked out better. Again, we weren't ready uh, last week, Chris, but now we're ready to handle the challenge that this uh, this is. So the, the very first Cowboys game I ever went to um, was Christmas Day in 2006 with my dad. Uh, they wound up losing to the Eagles. It was horrible. Um, but I was a, a junior in high school at the time. Um, again, really impressionable age, and that was obviously the year that Tony Romo burst onto the scene. At the time, uh, the Cowboys would stay the night before games at the Marriott by the airport. And my dad had been to a bunch of Dallas Cowboys games, so you know he knew that, and we actually stayed there. And the night before, when they would arrive, they would sign autographs. The morning of, when they would leave, they would sign autographs. And so the morning of the game, uh, it's Christmas Day. We're, we're out there. It's cold, whatever. There's a bunch of fans. We've made friends. And we're getting – I've told this story before. Uh, someone who's followed me uh, for years has heard it maybe. But, um, you know, Romo comes out and, like, at, th at that moment, like, everybody else is invisible, you know, because you're just like, that's the only thing I care about. Like, I, I – you know, and it's Christmas Day, and I'm about to go to the game. You know what I mean? But, like, that was the most important thing to happen. And so he comes up to the gate, and I've got, like, my, my ball. I'm this young, awkward high school kid. Uh, and he's just like going the other direction, like slowly moving the other direction. And, and every step, my heart's just like breaking, right? Like this is not going to happen. And so he leaves, he gets in his car and he starts driving off and I'm just devastated. My dad's probably thinking like this ungrateful kid, like we have the whole game to go to and he's like already pouting or whatever. Uh, but he picked me up and he was like, Hey dude, you see that stoplight over there? He was like, he's, he's got to go through that stoplight. Like, you know, if you run and you beat him, whatever, like you never know what's going to happen. So like a, you know, like a scene out of a movie or out of a film, I just tucked the ball and ran to the stoplight and, um, and not to brag, but beat him. Um, you know what I mean? Like just kind of an impressive thing, beating a moving vehicle. Um, and I, and when I got there, um, the light turned red. And so, and he was like slowing down because he obeys traffic laws. And, um, and so I was kind of like, well, what's going to happen here? Like he's, he's got to stop. And, um, and as he stopped or as he slowed down, he was rolling down his window and he had a Sharpie in his hand and he signed my football and he said, Merry Christmas, man, and, and drove off. And that was just super cool. And it was a really random moment. Uh, but those are the kind of moments that when you're a kid and you're a football fan, like those things leave such a lasting imprint on your life. And wow. you've obviously experienced this like massive imprint from Romo um, through the film and through the work you've done and the relationship you forged as a result of it and all these tentacles of his life and his family. Uh, but he's a person that means a lot to a lot of people. And so I think that a lot of people are going to appreciate your work as a result of that. Yeah, I, I think that's a beautiful story. It, it shows even, I mean, so you know who he is because he's the type of guy that will roll his window and sign something for you because he saw that you made that effort to go do that. And that's how he is. He looks at people and and he he you know if he sees that you're you 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 have that effort that passion to do something he's not gonna shut you down like a lot you know there's a lot of people that do that and that's okay that's them but that's not Tony Romo Tony sees something in you he gives you a shot and it will let you work at it and then he will be there for you to celebrate it and so that's really beautiful that he, that's a great story to know that he does it for so many people. He's touched so many people's lives and I'm excited that we were able to capture this on film and, and hopefully, um, you know, it, but the biggest thing for me too, is the fact that this film has even made more Roma fans because I see, I have a lot of people here in El Paso that are Niner fans and 49er fans, you know, they're, they're 49er fans. Right. And, so they're very like, oh, yeah, the Cowboys, blah, blah, blah. But then they watch Tony Romo, and all they can do is talk about him. And all they can do is like, I like Romo. Still, I like Romo. Romo's so great, this and that. And ultimately, that's what we were sending out to do. It's not a Dallas Cowboys film. It has elements of that. But ultimately, it's a Tony Romo story. It's a film about Tony Romo and who he is a person and how he made it happen and how he's touching people's lives. And like you said, and like the film says, Tony gives and nobody knows that he gives. And so hope, I aspire and continue to be wanting to be that person. You know, mm. you don't need to take a picture to show yourself doing something great to help other people. You can just do it. And that's how not only do we get closer to what we believe, but God for me. And um, we're able to make really make a difference in this world by giving and, and touching people that way.
That's really well said. Chris, uh, we can't wait to see the movie. Uh, we'll, of course, share details um, throughout the blog and the boys' universe and on my socials. Uh, once things are finalized, like you mentioned, everybody go follow Chris. Uh, as we leave, it would only be appropriate to ask you for a movie that we should watch, um, a movie recommendation, and then we get out of here. Besides well, this one. Besides this one. This one's really I mean, obvious. Well, I mean, sure. It was an hour endeavor, but yeah. I will actually uh, encourage people, if you're going to want to go to the movies this weekend, go watch Gran Turismo. Um, I felt like that was, uh, you know, I, I feel like don't one thing I do want to say is don't trust reviews right now. I don't know why, but the film was not reviewed properly. And I watched Gran Turismo, and it was like a dose of, like, inspiration and i saw myself in that this guy that that took this competition through this grand turismo game to actually become a race track driver and it's one of the best um adaptations of a video game i've ever seen that was made as kind of a documentary because this guy really really did this mm. and so i was watching it like oh my god like this is why i make films this is why i made now and ever and we don't see a lot of those films in theaters nowadays and so that's well said more than a video game movie it's it's an inspirational story of making the impossible possible and so i recommend that one and then please watch now never a ton of roma story when it's out awesome chris hannah thank you so much for joining us thanks everybody we'll see you next time